Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. It was exactly the kickstart Dustin Jacoby's pro kickboxing career needed. Last night, Las Vegas, the former Concord Triopia football star and one-time Quincy University and Culver Stockton quarterback scored a pair of knockouts over a pair of opponents in Casey Green and Ariel Sepulveda to snap a six-game, or I should say six-match losing streak and win the night's middleweight qualifier tournament, which gives him a shot as a contender in a tournament a little later this year. Jacoby in the final knocked down Green at the end of the first round and scored the TKO at the end of the second. Sepulveda, it was even more devastating. In fact, put a vine up on my Twitter feed of DJ's wonderful work last night. Congratulations to him. Do be sure to check it out on Twitter tonight. Good to see Dustin Jacoby doing very, very well. Well, for a team that returns 14 starters and 20 letter winners, Knox County felt the pinch of graduation a little more acutely than the numbers would suggest. Gone is conference MVP Brody Mowbray, all-conference wide receiver Seti Boone, and a pair of stalwart linemen up front, Nat Harder and Riley Poston. Cosmetically, the face of the franchise then has changed, and so too some of the dynamics of how the Eagles will tend to their business. And yet the prognosis for this season might well be stronger than it was this time a year ago. Thank you, Hey! Yeah, we have a great group of seniors this year. Um, not real flashy. Most of them are linemen, in fact. But uh, what they've done so far is just work really hard. And, and good things happen when you work hard. And right now what I see out of those guys is good leadership. There is significant football value to be found in Knox County's kind of blue collar, particularly when it's fronted by this kind of offensive line. Granted, with the exception of Zach Boatman, it's not a physically hulking group in appearance, but it is physical. We had a lot more guys in the weight room. We had a lot more guys come to summer stuff. That wasn't a really strong suit our last couple of years. And this year, a lot of people really buckled down and came. As of now, we got a full senior line pretty much, and they've all been gaining weight as far as strength and whatnot. Uh, we also got speed, so that's going to help us quite a bit. To that extent, the Eagles converted running back Corey Mowbray to guard, just to get downhill on defenses a little faster. And that benefits a more diverse array of weaponry. Anytime you uh, lose uh, the, the school's all-time leading rusher, it's going to be hard to replace that. But with Drew Hodge back there, he finished uh, three of the last four games last year. He finished with 100 yards. Um, so he finished strong last year. You have a guy like that, it's easy to kind of uh, set up everything else with him. Hodge is the very definition of a sledgehammer. But lest any defense sell out between the tackles to stop only him, Knox has a couple of sophomore weapons waiting to strike. The double reward of a freshman year quarterback battle. Nick Edwards and Hayden Miller uh, alternated throughout the year until about week six or seven. Then Nick kind of took the job and uh, we moved Hayden to a skill position. And they did, uh, they made some freshman mistakes, but they also did some great things out there. And this year we're ready for them to, to learn from some of those mistakes and uh, be a huge asset this year. Yeah, Nick Edwards, it's Dom's brother. He's, he has that mentality that he's going to go out there and make a play, whether it's with his arm, his feet, or lead blocking, whatever it might be to help us when he's going to do it, and that's, that's a great uh, tool for him to have. But it will be the improvement made on the other side of the football that ultimately determines if the Eagles can break out from under the Milan glass ceiling and start winning district and conference championships. We got some more size this year, too. We got Zach, Boatman, there's me, Tim Jones, and Randall McCarty. Uh, Timmy, Randall, all senior line, all very well experienced this year, so we'll have that brand. We have to strive to be better than the people across from us. So whether that's working in the weight room more, just coming out here and hitting each other harder, that's what we have to do. In the last couple of years, I think our defense has let us down in some of the big games just because we weren't able to match up with strength and uh, physicality. But this year, um, we got a lot of athletes on defense. We're not deep. Whenever you only have uh, 26, 27 guys on the team, you're not going to have depth. But the ones we do have are, are quality guys that have that can run and uh, get off get off blocks and make some uh, make some tackles. Whoa, camera guy went nuts there at the end. Don't know what happened with that one. Let's talk a little Major League Baseball here today. Brewers with a win over the Cardinals in comeback fashion. Mr. Carpenter's home run, all for naught. Three-run jack there. Also, the Cubs stay red hot as they take out the Giants today. Two to nothing. Big series for the Cubs. They've destroyed San Francisco. Jake Arrieta with a great pitching performance in the shutout. Went seven and two-thirds. Struck out six in the offing as well. Barnstorming starts tomorrow for us in Illinois and Iowa. I think our first couple of stops will be Rushville Industry and Keokuk. So you will see those previews coming up in the next couple of days. Looking forward to it. Missouri's kind of got the